17 years ago you wrote um, the score for one of the most epic Disney classics of all time, Aladdin. Now you had to create the music for the live action remake. Um, how did you handle the songs like completely new compositions or like remakes of your own songs? Well, a little bit of both. <laughs> you know, ba basically, the original animated movie, which was 1992, so that was actually, what, 27 years ago. Yes, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, okay, yeah. It's very, yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, those songs are the ten-pole moments, you know, they, they remain. Arabian Nights, Friend Like Me, uh, One Jump Ahead, Prince Ali, Hold the World. Um, and, and then, of course, in between was the Broadway show. Now, it's a live-action movie, and I took those original songs and really took my lead from Guy Ritchie, our director, who wanted to give them more of a contemporary edge. So we did that, and it really worked wonderfully. And we did some lyric rewrites as well to work it more into, the, you know, into what's on the screen. And, um, and then we wrote one new song for Jasmine called Speechless, and that's now the, you know, the new score. And it's still, it's still Aladdin. It's just more live action, more contemporary, I think. Um, can you describe the differences between the one new song and one old song? Um, maybe if you, you play sure. um, it on the piano? Well, sure. I mean, if the score comes from, mid, you know, for instance, at the very top of the movie, um, especially in the animated movie, we, remember we saw a camel walking over the dunes. And Very Middle Eastern. Then in the marketplace, it was something that's a little bit almost like Hollywood. You know, it's like this, this chase through, through uh, the marketplace and one jump, double head, red line, one swing, head of the sword. I steal only what I can afford. And that's everything. Uh, one jump. Um, And then when you get to the genie, of course, now we're in full Harlem jazz. So, Fats Waller. Oh my! And we have Prince Ali, Prince Ali, fabulous Ali a Papua. And when you get to a whole new world, soaring above the clouds. And on the new song, we talked about getting into Jasmine's soul. She doesn't want to be speechless. She wants to be heard. Here comes a wave meant to wash me away, a tide that is taking me under. Swallowing sand left with nothing to say, my voice drowned out in the thunder. Um, so the colors are pretty eclectic, mm -hmm. but it centers on, it does center on a sort of a, we call it the mysterious East, and then sort of the Hollywood take on the mysterious East. Um, you're part of the movie business for many years. Did you realize, or do you realize that the taste of the audience did change during the last 10 or 20 years? Oh, yes, audience taste cha uh, changes. But I have to say, when it comes to reacting to the movies we've done, the Disney movies, it's remained remarkably consistent. They love... They seem to, time seems to stop in a way mm -hmm. with, the, with the Disney movies. Um, it's, if it comes from the heart, I think audiences embrace it. <laughs> okay, last question. Can you describe one normal working day of yours? I get up um, about, you know, 8, 8.30. I get into the studio by about 10 o'clock. That's this is when I'm at home because I travel a lot for <laughs> my shows. Um, you usually have a collaborator comes by and we're working on a project and we have talks about the song moments or the structure and, and then we start to work on a new song, like a, maybe a musical idea. I like them in the room while we do that. And then I make a little demo for them to take with them and they come back with a lyric. And then by about four or five o'clock, sort of done, and I go in the house and I have a nice martini. <laughs> and enjoy my night, my evening with Janice, and maybe watch a Yankee game or something. Go to sleep, and the next day I'm up and 
writing more songs. Okay, thank you very, very thank much. You. Was one of the greatest I ever had. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. Do you trust me?